Public Affairs very much thanks Rizidco, our sole corporate underwriter, for helping to make the production of this show possible. I believe that every parent should have a choice. A choice with a good opportunity that the money, these $30,000, follow that kid whatever school that they want to put them in for a better education. If you can't read, Jeff, you can't be a lawyer, you can't be a doctor, you can't be a police officer, you can't even have a driver's license if you can't read. We must change the direction in the way that Chicago Public School is going because they're heading down the wrong world and they misrepresenting the taxpayers that take their money every year that goes to Chicago Public School. We're talking about over five billion dollars. We got to be accountable and we must have transparency. Before we do all that, we got to look at the numbers and call for an audit. I believe that people that has not been elected by the people, that has been appointed, they are obligated to the person that appointed them. Business must continue as usual because they did not get appointed. I mean, they did not get voted in. They got it appointed in. So they owe favors to the person that appointed. And these favors must change. And they will change, Jeff, on November the 5th. You're running in an election for school board. Perhaps this is the first time, certainly in modern history, when Chicago elected their school board members, right? That's yes. historic. Tell yes. us a little bit how that's going to go on November 5 about that election. Well, Jeff, um, you have 10 districts in Chicago. This is the first time in Chicago history that a person will be elected out of 10 districts to represent Chicago Public Schools. Then after they are elected, the mayor will have the opportunity to appoint 10 people. If I run in 6th district and I live in B, then he will appoint somebody in A. So on through the rest of the districts. And he also would appoint the president. So the mayor gets to appoint 11 people and 10 people get to a run in this um, time November 5th. All right, so it's going to be a 21 person school board on November 5 that's elected, counting the president and the two members each from each of the 10 districts. Excuse me, it's going to be 10 of them who are elected, and then 10 from the 10 districts are going to be appointed by the mayor, and then one is appointed by the mayor to be the president. But it's a 21 member school board. Yes. And people would know if they currently go to these school board meetings, there's seven members counting the president, right? Correct. So it's expanded. People are going to wonder, how does that work? Is that awkward? Is it unwieldy? We'll find out. And what happens in two years, in 2026? Well, in two years, all members, all 21 members of the Chicago Electric School Board will run for office. Um, and then they will have, I believe, a four-year term or a stagnated term. So the mayor would not pick anyone in two years. Everyone would have to run, even the president, and the president would have to run citywide. All right, so elections, hey, you never heard that saying, Chicago ain't ready for reform? Well, ready or not, reform's coming to Chicago, right? Correct. And why does it matter? 2.7 million people in Chicago. Does the school board matter? Does CPS matter? Why do these things matter, Andre Smith? Jeff, it's so important for us to have this elected school board because usually the board and the president is appointed by the mayor. This board is a $9 billion budget. This is one of the biggest incubators or the biggest um, opportunities that's in Chicago. $9 billion, 9.4 to be exact. But if you look at the numbers, and thanks to um, Wirepoint that I do my research, and because I don't want to just talk numbers to you without being, you know, having facts. If you look at 2018, the budget was six billion dollars, and per school, I mean per child or student, 
per year, we spent $17,000. And as you know, every year, the budget increased. So if we look at today, 2024, we had $9.4 billion. That's the budget. A little bit shy of $10 billion. And what we're spending as taxpayers per student per year is $30,000. Now notice something, Jeff, that from 2018 to 2024, we went from $6 billion to $9 billion. We went from per student per year, $17,000 to $30,000. So yes, the budget is increasing. But our children, learning disability, a learning ability is decreasing. In the black community, you have 79% that's graduating. But there's only, I believe, 18% that's graduating at the level of math and 14% at reading. Those numbers might be off a couple of points, but they're not graduating with the equipment or the learning ability to maintain out in this society. In other words, once they get to college, they're reading at an eighth grade education. Yeah, if that. So, um, I mean, those are terrible numbers. I think that anybody watching this may be shocked. A lot of people don't know that for the last 20 years, not just few years or currently what we're referring to, these numbers have gone up and down with, say, 10 to 10 to 20 percent for blacks and Hispanics, maybe Hispanics doing a little better, but generally in the range of 10 to 20 percent, reading at grade level, some would say reading at all, okay? That's a terrible number. And, and you know, it's not... It's not just a skin color or race problem because, you know, at CPS, I mean, you've got, yes, blacks and Hispanics more in the 10 to 20, 25 percent range, but whites, I think, only 15 percent of the enrollment have about a 50 percent. That's not great. These whites, on general, are more affluent family. They come with some... Uh, and some privileges, some benefits that maybe some of the kids who are of color and lower income may not have. So really, we would expect better than 50%. Well, and why not 80%? Because they lack a lot of these problems and obstacles that lower income kids have, with ir ir irrespective of color. So, it, and, and when we look around the state, it's not just a Chicago problem. You can see similar numbers in Decatur and Rockford and Quincy. And so this is a public school problem, of which part of that problem is at CPS. Our main focus today is on CPS, because we're talking to Andre Smith, and he's running for the school board. So that's what this show is going to be about. But I always want to note for people, if you're interested in public policy, this is broader it's just a statewide problem. If you're, if you're Governor Pritzker watching this, you should be shocked because you've never talked about it. And if you knew about it, I imagine you'd be saying these numbers. If you're Mayor Brandon Johnson, I would think you've been there a year. You'd be talking about these numbers. Last time he heard him was when I talked to him about it in a press conference. That's a whole other story, okay? But we should be talking a lot about this every day. And, you know, why is this? Does he agree? We should be hearing about people who are running for Congress. Yes, in Illinois and everywhere, even Congress has something to say about education. So uh, this is just a pitch for why you should listen. Don't you turn that dial. Don't you turn anything off. I'm dating myself. I don't turn that dial. There is no dial, Jeff. It's an on-off button. It's digital, right? Okay. But stick around because Andre Smith... You've talked about how costly this thing is, CPS, and how much is going up, right? And I don't know if you mentioned, when you're talking about 
property taxes right now in Chicago, what's the level of property taxes? For that what corresponds when we? In fact, when you said 9.4, not to quibble, but I think it's budget now 24, 25, 9.9, 9.9 billion. So we can say 10. We can round up, right? Yeah. See, Jeff. So 10 billion dollars in spending at CPS. Give us an idea. Do you have, can you tell us a little bit about the impact on the people who don't necessarily have kids in the schools, but they pay property taxes? Yeah, whether you have, and, and some people just don't get it. They say, well, I, I'm not interested because I don't have kids in school, but you have property. Right. And right now, the property tax and the property owners are paying $5 billion at this point that's going to Chicago Public Schools. Through their property taxes. Through their property taxes that right. make up this $9 billion budget. Right. And when you look at the numbers, because numbers make sense, and if you look at that you're a business owner and you walk into your place of business, you can't survive at a nine, almost $10 billion budget and you're putting the um, finances on the backs of the taxpayer and the, the level of education is on a decrease. So something, you have, you have to come in and change things around. And that's why, Jeff, I'm calling for an independent audit. I need to know where every dollar at. We have to be accountable for our taxpayers and every dollar that they give Chicago Public School. With a $10 billion budget. And it's not like our kids are not showing up. They're showing up, but they're not being properly educated. So we need to overhaul this system. We need a world-class, a Chicago world-class education institution that everyone else look at Chicago and say, I want to send my child to that school. That's what we need. And that's what Andre Smith is going to work on. Yeah. I mean, did you tell people about your experience and about your kid and how they, uh, how they were told there was a problem and your kid was illiterate? Have you talked about that with people? Well, Jeff, my son was in, uh, I would say, the fourth grade in right. Chicago Public Schools. And me and my wife at the time was called up to the school. And the principal had to be in her 50s. She told, told us that, that my son was basically illiterate, that he had a learning disability. And I know my son. My wife at the time know our son. We knew that he didn't have a learning disability. And what parent want to hear that from someone else? So it was devastating. So we talked it over, and we took our school, our, our, our child, out of that school, and we put him into a charter school. The next year, he was able to read everything that he saw, and he just Where was graduated. that charter school? Where was that? Uh, it was Evelyn Park. Evelyn Park. Evelyn Park. Evelyn so, Park. Okay. Yes. So then he went to the high school, Urban Prep, and he graduated this past June, the top of his class, with over 30 offers to college. Wow. You have now, any idea? imagine, Go ahead, Jeff, sorry. Sorry, imagine yeah. if we would have believed that teacher. My son today would be on rhetoric. He would be on some type of pill, you know, and it would be a disaster. But we took him out of there and put him into a charter school. That's why, Jeff, I believe that every parent should have a choice. A choice with a good opportunity that the money, these $30,000, follow that kid whatever school that they want to put them in for a better education. Well, uh, like we're, what would be some of those choices in, uh, in, in, your, in your world that you're suggesting? I mean, obviously they can go to a charter school you're suggesting, which is what your son did, right? Mm -hmm. First to, what was it, Avalon? Yes. In grade four, right? Yes. And then to urban prep in high school, right? Yes. And the results were quite a bit better, right? Mm -hmm. So that choice worked. Any other choices that you would offer people 
other than a charter school? Well, Jeff to take their thirty thousand dollars or so and plunk it down and say, I want to give this to these other people. Well, like we what would be some of those choices in uh, in in your in your world that you're suggesting? I mean, obviously they can go to adjust. If you're on the school board, you could do something. Well, I about believe. It that the parents should make the choice and make the right choice okay. on education, on the best education that her, or her son or daughter needs. Not just because this school is across the street, because a half a block, well, a half a mile from where I live at, the school only has around 30 kids in the school. So do that make um, that a good institution or a good school? They should be able to go to charter schools. They should be able to go to private schools. They should be able to go to um, Chicago Public School or whatever school that that parent see. And the money should be able to follow the okay. student. Right now, today, we see from 2018 to 2024, it's not working. And when, when I'm in office and a, a member of the Chicago Board of uh, education school board in the 6th district. We're walking into a deficit. We're going to be underwater. Mm -hmm. The budget is going to be 10, 10, 10 billion dollars, but it's going to be over that. That's why it's so important for accountability I and transparency. Okay. Should the parents be allowed to take their money? You've already said they should be able to go to a charter school. If they can get into a select enrollment school at CPS, into a magnet school, all those choices you should say, take their money and go there, the money follows the kid. Now what about a private school outside the, outside the Chicago public school system? Can they go to somewhere, say in Chicago, but a private school and take their 30000 and go there? Is that okay with you? Yes, it is. Okay. And I'll say this, Jeff. I'm not into this school versus that school. I see. Okay. I'm into representing every person in the 6th District, making sure that they get good education. And because I'm representing the 6th District, I'm going to be on the board of, of, of Chicago voting on every child or every school in Chicago. So therefore, I'm looking for education and good education. And I believe that Chicago should be Chicago world class of education, the best education institution in this world. Yeah, and so you've said, um, yeah, you're being elected from the 6th District, so you're focusing with special attention to the people and the kids in that district. But as you just said, if you were to argue for all of CPS to have school choice, private and public, that might, that might benefit the people in the 8th district and the 10th. So in a sense, you're representing all of the people in all of the districts. You're representing all of the parents and all of the kids of the 320,000 or so in the public school system. Direct question to you, Andre Smith, because you're running. Yes. Do you love competition for the public schools and allow them to compete better? And if they have to compete with private schools, that's all to the good. That'll make them better, right? You must have competition. You must have competition. Okay. And, um, and there's so many facets to this. I mean, you know, there are 44 schools, according to WirePoints, who have zero students proficient in math. Yeah. We've got 620 schools. 44 of them don't have any kids at all who are proficient in the entire school. Proficient in math, 22 schools don't have any kids proficient in reading. They're not teaching kids how to read, how to do math. I mean, as a school board member, what can you do about that? Well, Jeff, I say this. You look at Chicago Public School because it is a business. And if you have a company and you're paying $9 billion a year as a budget, and you're not getting any benefit, saying that you're buying product, but you're not selling anything. You can't stay in business. Something has to change. Right. And so 
do you need to look into as a school board member, well, is it the teacher? Are we hiring the best teachers? Are we, are we training them? Are we assessing them? Are we giving them all the tools they need? I mean, now I've gone to school board meetings off and on for the last decade. I've been on a school board, not here, but outside of Chicago. These questions are never asked. It's amazing. I've never seen it, okay? I've been going, I've never seen the present, current, or past talk about the percentage of kids who read at grade level in his school system. Shouldn't they be doing that? Would you demand that of your president, that he talk about it, that the school board meeting discusses what we're talking about? Would you do that? I would do that as a school board member. As a school board member? You yes. think you could stand up and do that? I have no problem doing it. Yeah. So you say to the people running on the 6th, excuse me, say to the people in the 6th district, when you're running, you're running on that. You're yes. running on school choice, yes. aren't you? Yes. School choice, public and private, right? Yes. Everybody should have that. You, in a sense, were lucky enough to have a choice. Not everybody gets that choice at CPS. You took advantage of it, and the world changed for you as a parent and for your child. The American dream was realized. Think of what happened if you listen to them. My kid's illiterate. There's nothing we can do. A whole, that your child's life, your dream would have been lost. If you can't read, you can't get a job. If you can't get a job, you can't go to college. If you want to go to college, you want to have a marriage, you want to have a family. It cuts out so much of your life, doesn't it, if you can't read? If you can't read, Jeff, you can't be a lawyer. You can't be a doctor. You can't be a police officer. You can't even have a driver's license if you can't read. We must change the direction in the way that Chicago Public School is going because they're heading down the wrong world and they're misrepresenting the taxpayers that take their money every year that goes to Chicago Public School. We're talking about over $5 billion. We got to be accountable and we must have transparency. Before we do all that, we got to look at the numbers and call for an audit. Okay, and who are you running against? You've got opponents in the sixth, right? I'm running against a young lady. She's in, the, in her 20s um, that Chicago Teachers Union is supporting, and her name is Anusha. I'm running against another young lady uh, that used to work for. Chicago Public School. She was assistant principal and she got fired from Chicago Public School and she's on a do not hire list. Um, so I don't know what would make her want to run to represent Chicago Public Schools when Chicago Public School clearly said we don't never want her anymore. Well, do those two people, does Anusha, I think it's Vatakura, something like that, yes. Jessica Biggs, this is public record, I hope I've got their names pronounced yes. correctly. Jessica, they Biggs. Biggs. Jessica Biggs, sorry. Do they believe in what you believe? Do they believe these numbers are generally accurate? You're referring to them from wire points. They don't even know the numbers. They don't know the numbers. Really? No. You've talked to them. No, I mean, they're Anusha running. and Jessica don't know the numbers we've been talking they about for the last the half hour. They don't know the numbers. Okay. Do they care about the numbers? Do they care if the kids at CPS can read? Do you think the superintendent of CPS cares that these numbers show roughly 20% or fewer of the 320,000 students under his charge can read at grade level and maybe read it all. Does he give a damn? Well, let me say this, Jeff. I believe that people that has not been elected by the people, that has been appointed, they are obligated to the person that appointed them. Business must continue as usual because they did not get appointed. I mean, they did not get voted in. They got it appointed in. So they owe favors to the person that appointed. And these favors must change. And they will change, Jeff, on November the 5th. Yeah, so you mean Anusha, is she endorsed by anybody? Anusha is ran by CTU. She, what's CTU? Chicago Teachers Union. Hey, she's so she's going to be the same thing that we got. You mean you don't think CTU, Chicago Teachers Union, cares about the fact that 20% or so of the black kids are reading at grade level. 
they don't find that number abhorrent. Is that Have what you're you ever about? heard them talk about those numbers? Have you? What you heard them talk about is raises for themselves, okay. air conditioners, nurses in the in the in, in the rooms, defunding the police. That's what you heard. CTU. Well, one of these seven about. people who've been on the school board, some of them perhaps for three or four years, and are about to go off. What have they been talking about? Have they been talking about what we're talking about? I mean, they were all appointed by the mayor, and the mayor before mayor before the current guy, Brandon Johnson, that would be Lori Lightfoot, I think. I don't think any of them go back to Mayor Emanuel. What did they got to say for themselves? Did they just please Rahm Emanuel when he was there? Did they just please Lori Lightfoot? Did they just please Brandon Johnson? They was appointed, Jeff. So Once they they care about the mayor. They care about, if they please the mayor, they've done their job, right? And they'll get, and they'll stay in office. And these folks who are running at the, for Chicago Teachers Union, you come on, we'll talk with you, talk with anybody. You they tell me, tell me I'm wrong. Tell me you're running endorsed by CTU, but you care about these numbers, and you don't give a rat's ass what CTU says. You think they would say that? Look, CTU never went on strike because of these numbers of our kids not being educated properly. They went on strikes because of air conditioning rooms, nurses, defunding the police, and raises. And real. when you look at these numbers, these numbers are real. You believe in these numbers? These numbers are real. You read wire points, you think they got it right, right? You look out the front door. Yeah. You look at our children. Yeah. You know, are they being educated? Or do we live in an educational um, institution within the city? Are we world class in education? No. Every parent should have the power to be able to choose good schools for their child to have great education and to be able to stick their chest out just like me. I believe, Jeff, that the choice is the right way and empowering parents to have the choice and taking off the chains, making them decide to go to a failing school or a failing system. Take the chains off and free up the parents and free up the kids and allow them to be what they were born to be. So you believe in school choice, school vouchers, because you think that's best for the kids to get out of a failing system into one they and their parents think could succeed in teaching them how to read. Is that, am I getting that right? I believe in good and great education. Jeff, I come from a family of royalty. My great, great grandmother, name was Carrie Williams. She's the first person in US history. She was a color school teacher in West Virginia. She's the first person to file a lawsuit in 1864, for equal pay and equal rights for color students, for color kids, and for color teachers. I'm carrying that torch in 2024 in Chicago. We will build a world class Chicago great education system here. We're going to turn this thing around. All right, Andre Smith, candidate for school board in the 6th District at CPS, Chicago Public Schools. You let us know. Well, this is September 11. You have till November 5. We want to see you back. Let us know who's supporting you. Let us know who the good guys are, who the bad guys are, and um, how it's going. If All right, Andre Smith, you come back, and you come back next week and every week to Public Affairs.